or lipid bilayer, in which parallel layers of lipids face away from each other. In this case, the lipids are phospholipids, with two fatty acid chains, or tails, attached to a phosphate-containing head group, hence the term phospholipid. The head groups are hydrophilic, meaning water-loving. They form weak bonds with the surrounding water. The fatty acid chains are hydrophobic, meaning water-fearing. They do not dissolve in water and are actually excluded from water because of the weak attraction of water molecules for each other. The hydrophilic and hydrophobic characteristics of the phospholipids keep the membrane intact without requiring any energy on the part of the cell. The head and tail groups in membrane lipids are the right size to line up side by side, forming the sheets of membrane that surround the cell and divide its interior into compartments. a very well-known phenomenon with a less well-known explanation. Osmotic flow occurs when two volumes of water are separated by a membrane that allows the passage of water molecules only, but not other molecules. If the water on one side of the membrane has a high concentration of dissolved particles, called solute, water will flow in both directions across the membrane, but more will flow in the direction where the concentration of solute is higher. This process can create enough pressure to burst a cell, and routinely creates the pressure that holds plants upright by creating cell turgor against the sturdy cell walls of plant cells. The movement of water to a region of higher solute concentration describes what happens, but why does it happen? On a molecular level, the solute has a special influence on the water very close to the barrier. Water molecules and solute exist in a world of constant molecular collisions. At the barrier, water can pass through in both directions, but the solute molecules collide with the barrier and bounce off. The rebounding solute collides with water molecules, transmitting kinetic energy and driving water molecules away from the barrier. It is as if the barrier has a repellent force field on one side only, pushing water molecules away. Multiply this effect by billions of solute molecules in constant collisions with the barrier, and the net result is that more water flows in than out, and osmotic pressure builds. Cell transport is the process of how things move in or out of the cell through the cell membrane. There are two broad categories of cell transport. The first category is passive transport. For a cell, passive transport means it's an automatic process that doesn't require any input of energy. For example, diffusion is a passive process in which particles move either into or out of the cell from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. The cell doesn't use any energy when this happens. The second category of cell transport is active transport. This is when particles move from an area of lower concentration to an area of higher concentration. When particles move against the concentration gradient, energy is required, often to allow protein pumps to assist in particle movement. Why would the cell need to move particles from a low to high concentration and expend energy to do it. An important example is seen in your heart muscle cells. In order for your heart to beat, there are certain molecules that have to move from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration for those cardiac muscle cells to work. So the main things to remember are passive transport happens automatically 
with no energy required. While active transport needs energy for it to occur, 